Alright everybody, welcome back. Today is the 10th. I hope everyone had a wonderful week. I know I did. Why is my thing constantly making noise? So here you can see our last week's rock. Fourth of July was obviously the theme, if you can't tell. <laughs> I am working on getting the Facebook event updated so that we can go ahead and do this. What did everybody do for the 4th? Did y'all do fireworks? That's what I did. And I ate. And I watched some movies. That are of course 4th of July themed. Okay, so that's been updated. And now I'm just going to update my... Personal... Facebook. And there we go. Alright. Hi everybody. Welcome back to our class. Today we will be doing veggie friends. Um, we may not get to all of the ones that I listed on the Facebook page, but I'm going to try. So, we'll see. I did base coat all of my rocks with a white other than one, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, first, I'd like to thank my sponsors, which are Chris, Marisol, Jared, Bobby, Elizabeth, Marilyn, and of course my mother. If you'd like to become a sponsor to help keep this class free, all of the links for donations are in the description. And we have an Amazon if you would like to message me, I can send you the link for our Amazon wish list. So, let me clear these off. I have some really cool rocks that I wanted to show you that are not ones I'm going to be painting. I know, crazy, right? I found this. It's like a perfect cube. I was like, that is just too cool. If I do paint it, of course I'm going to make it like a dice. I don't know how accurate the rolling would be, but I think it would look really cool. So there's that one. And then I found this really beautifully striped rock. I'm not even sure how this happens, but it's so pretty. I just really love it. I think it's it's too pretty to paint, you know? Sometimes you, you have that. I kind of wanted to see what it would look like with water on it. Oh wow, look at that. Look at that coloration, guys. It looks like a beach, like the ocean waves. That's so pretty. Sometimes I just find rocks that I just love and I just keep them. Okay, so for today, we will be jumping right in and we're going to do um, veggie friend rocks. So this is one of the rocks that I have and I used that spackle technique that I was talking about that one that I showed you one that one class. Um, and it's where you take spackle, and I use the patch and paint lightweight spackling. I hope that's not moving too much. Um, and I just sort of push it into the, the holes and divots. And then I let it dry, and I used some sandpaper, and I just went like this to get off the excess spackle that I had left on top so that it would fully fill the divot instead of having sort of a little dimple still. Um, and then I washed it. So that that way none of the sandpaper, like rough, scratchy stuff would be all over it. So that's a great way to get semi-perfect rocks to look more perfect for painting. So that you can have an even su painting surface, which really helps out in the long run. So for this one we're going to do our base paint, 
of zinc white so it has its base coat so it'll really pop when we put on color. Um, so I'm just going to use whatever brush you have. You don't have to have a specific brush. Yeah, the rock really did look like petrified wood, which is what I really loved about it. I think unique rocks are really cool. And I find a lot, because I like go looking for rocks way too much. A lot of people think I should stop, because I'm always carrying rocks in my bag, which is probably bad for me. But I can't help it. I really like doing this. It's very relaxing, and just sort of calms me down. And it's something I can do while... You know, there's all these shutdowns and whatnot. So, it's very nice. Okay, so we have our base coat. And we're going to let that kind of dry. And rinse off our brush. Make sure you have a paper towel so that you can dry your brush if you're going to use only like one brush. And I have a fan today and things are not going to want to stay still. Um, I find most of my rocks at like lakes or rivers or bayous. Um, sometimes you can find them like outside of hotels, but always ask first if you can take a rock or leave a rock that you've painted because I kind of feel like you're beautifying the existing area, you know, like barter with the hotel. <laughs> Just be like, I'll leave you this pretty rock for one regular plain rock. And usually they'll be like, okay. I haven't been met with much opposition for that. Okay, so now that I've dried my brush, put it back up. So we're going to start with this one. And I'm going to get some red. And I'm going to take a bright red and kind of a, a dulled out red, okay? So for those of you who are just joining us, who were not present in the um, previous videos, we have this technique that is for making ombre, and it's where you put like one color in like a big splotch, and then the other color near it, and then you just sort of rub until they kind of combine without bringing them too far in either direction, if that makes sense. So we're going to kind of do that today. And we're going to do this on a lot of them, so pay attention. <laughs> this one's kind of important. And then I'm just going to take some of my dark, and I'm going to put it around the edges. Sort of like that. And then I'm going to take a separate brush just going to fill in the middle because we don't want the middle to be too dark and then as you get to the sides you want to be careful about moving your brush like see how I accidentally got too much in the middle that's okay but you want to kind of make sure you're doing this without too much mess up. <laughs> and remember, you can always wet your brush to get the stuff off and then start again. And you can always touch this up if it goes too like far down or far in if you don't want it. So I feel like that's a little too dark in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some more of my light colored. And I'm just going to bring it in and see how it just sort of evens it out. Works out that way. You want to be careful if you have a base coat because you don't want to accidentally like go too deep into it. 
otherwise the base coat will shine through because you've wet the paint over and over again and it'll just start bleeding. I also suggest having some form of like wet nap or studio wipes. I use the Soho Urban Artist Studio Wipes, which are pre-moistened wipes. I apparently have not opened this one. But these work really, really well. And you just pull them out. Pull that out. And then you have a little hand wipe, which is very useful when doing pretty much any form of art. Alright, and then you're just going to close up the red, so we're going to wait for this to dry fully, because it is clearly too wet to paint on. And we're going to do sort of the same technique, but with oranges, to make a carrot. And I'm sorry I don't have more uh, examples, I do have two examples today, but we may or may not get to them, so I don't want to show you yet. If I don't get to all of the ones I mentioned, we will do them in the fruits class, which will be next week. Because, why not? Okay, um, oranges. We have two different oranges. Cute, right? Okay, same sort of thing. Make your center light, your outside dark. see if this brush is cleared enough. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Let me put that up. Okay, so... Oh, also, if you have any comments or, or questions, I'm watching the live feed on my laptop, so I can see your questions. This is another technique to doing the same thing. And it's just filling in the middle first and then just bringing in the color on the edges. And then we're going to go back and like combine it with a little bit more of the light. There's all sorts of techniques to make ombres. No one way is correct. I mean, it's kind of what I like about painting. There's so many techniques out there that you can like kind of do whatever. So see how I'm just taking a little bit of this light color. And just bringing it through so it kind of darkens. You can also make your own middle color if you want. There's no one, one right way to do this. So don't feel like this is the only way you can make an ombre. Alright, so there's our orange. And this is Cadmium Orange Deep and Cadmium Orange from Soho Paints. And I get my paints at Jerry's Artorama, um, which I've posted about on our Facebook page before. So if you're interested, that is where I get my paints. Okay, and then this one this one is going to be a little bit more complex. Um, it will be green. So I'm going to use um, hooker's green and cadmium yellow green. And that's sort of what they look like to do this effect. This one we're not making an ombre so much. Um, it'll make more sense as I do it. It's going to be peas. which are actually my least favorite vegetable. And I like most vegetables, but I really don't like peas. So for this one, we're just going to make the dark in the middle. And if this isn't dark enough for you, you feel free to make either make your own darker color or use a darker color if you have one. I probably had one, I just didn't think to look for a darker one. 
And you can always layer more to make it look darker. So, and we kind of want to make sure this is like wide enough because obviously you're going to be putting peas in there. And we want to be able to see the peas. And remember in your, if you have these divots, just dab into them instead of um, just going over them and over them because you're just going to make the divot worse, like more noticeable. Um, but if you do this dab technique in and then go back over, it fills in the hole, which is super useful. And these don't have to be perfect. I'm a big believer in not being perfect in rocks. Because if you look for perfection in a rock, you're going to probably drive yourself crazy. Like, I've seen a lot of rocks in my day, and let me tell you. Perfection is a very, very rare find. Alright, so there's our dark. So rinse off our brush. Clear it of its paint. Doesn't have to be fully cleared because you're using the same colors. Like family. And see how much lighter this is. It's gonna look so good. This is why I say do the, the white base coat first. Because otherwise, this could have taken like forever to do. Because <laughs> to try and get these colors to be as, as popped as possible, you want to do a base coat. It's like primer for eyes when you're doing eye makeup. So we're just going to fill in all the outside area with this light green. Don't worry, we'll be adding more detail when we get closer to um, filling it in and whatnot. So there we go. So it doesn't have to be perfect. See? Okay. Did I just get red all over it? No. Cool. Is this dry? Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so put up our greens, because we're not going to need green right away for this. Okay, so for our pepper, this is going to be the easiest one. Remember on our birds how we did the eyes? How we had like different eyes that we did? And in our monster rocks too? How we did the all these different eyes, and you can have like six eyes, or you know, one eye, or whatever. We're gonna do something like that. So, if you have a spouncer, which is just a, a spongy little like dotting tool, you can use that. If you don't know what that is, go feel free to go um, to our dots video, which is now on our YouTube. And you can see that. You can also use like the end of a pen. Works really well. Um, even the end of a paintbrush would work really well for a sponsor. However, these are not big enough for what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to just paint mine on so that those who don't have some form of sponsor can see kind of how I do those. Um, and I'm going to use this brush, which is a very small angle brush. Okay, yeah. And I'm going to use a white. And I'm not going to put much on my, my brush. And I'm just going to make what sort of appears as a circle. You can also do this with um, like a white sharpie or something, or like a paint marker. And they don't have to be the same size. They can be all sorts of different shapes. There are no rules. Okay. So 
So those are going to be my eyes. Because why not? So rinse off my brush. <laughs> um, the YouTube page is TX Rockers as well. Um, makes it real easy. It's also on our Facebook page so that you can go ahead and go over from there. Um, it's pinned to the top, so it makes it real, real simple. Okay, so now I'm going to take a thinner brush. Looks like this. This is a size 4 brush by Artist Touch, and it's a round brush. I'm going to take some black. Now, some people like to do this part first. I don't really have a particular way of doing it. You can do the mouth first, you can do the eyes first, you can do the outline of the eyes first. It's all up to you. If you have a daughter tool, I tend to suggest doing the white first just because if you put black down first, it's going to be really, really hard to cover. Um, but if you just want to like kind of make like a circle in black before you put the white in and then fill it in with the white, that's easy too. So, I'm going to do... Just a simple mouth. Real easy. Really simple. And then I'm going to switch down to a uh, thinner brush. I'm going to use my liner brush to do the outline on the black for the eyes. And it's okay if you mess up. You can always fix it. Just always roll with it, you know? Right, so you're just going to go around the eye. You can also do this with a sharpie. It would probably be easier to do it with a sharpie. I'm just showing for our viewers who do not have paint markers or sharpies. Um, if you are using paint markers, I strongly suggest the Lotus Artist Supply or Lotus Art Supply um, Artist Paint Markers. You can get them on Amazon. They're really good. I really like them. Um, They've not failed me yet, and I've had them for over a year. So, I think that's a good sign. And that's the what they look like, Lotus Art Supply. They're really nice. Um, they come in a 15 and a 12, I believe. Like, pack of markers. So it's sort of like eyeliner, if you mess up, just keep making it darker. <laughs> just make it thicker. It's fine. You can also go back over in white once it's dried and, and force it back out. And sometimes I'll add like character face characteristics, so like... I'll do little little touches. You can also add eyelashes. You can add a nose if you want, eyebrows, all up to you. And then I'm just going to come in and add the eye. And you can determine your size of your eye. It doesn't have to be the same size I'm doing. You can make them big, you can make them small. It's all up to you. You can have bubbles instead of negative space, which is how I'm doing it. It 
really is whatever you want to do. And remember, eyes don't have to be even. You're looking for sisters more than you're looking for twins. Because that's how people's eyes really are in real life. Very few people actually have even eyes fully. Now I'm going to add a little quirky eyebrow. Because I like to give them character. And a little nose. So you can smell. Alright, then we're going to go in with a bigger brush with some white to do the top. So I'm just going to essentially make hair. And this is just so that the green will really pop once we put it on there, once it's dried. You can also add like a, a highlight if you want on them. That's your choice. Um, I'm not going to do it on this one. I might do it on a, a later one. I'll show you at least an example of it um, on a different one. Okay, so we're going to go down to our carrot. I don't know why I'm not using my thing. I have this really cool thing that I like made off of something that was on our Amazon wish list that one of our sponsors got us. And I love this thing. It makes doing it so much easier. Alright, so for this one, before we do eyes and whatnot, I'm going to add lines. And you can add the lines in whatever kind of color you want. I'm using a burnt sienna, very sparingly. I could lighten this, and I might lighten this. No, I think I'm just going to try and see how it looks. And I just want to come in with these, like, real fine lines. Because, like, carrots have kind of rounds. So they have like this striping pattern on them. And you want to always make sure to paint from the outside in so that your tips of your lines go to the inside. Just makes it easier. And if you mess up, it's okay. You can always fix it. Rock painting is one of those things that's anybody's thing. It's like however you want to do it, you do it. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the white for the top, because I already know I'm going to be wanting that, and I might as well start it now, so that I can do the face and then maybe it'll be dry by the time I finish. And they don't have to be perfect. Like I said, and you can give them character, they don't have to all just be triangles, you could like, make it kind of a fuzzy line, depends on the leaf you want, I mean, this isn't technically the right leaf for a, a carrot, but whatever, it works, it gets the point across, and that's really the true point, I guess, of rocks is to be the vague expression of what we're doing. So the whole reason I don't leave these um, looking just like the like pepper or, or like any of the, the vegetables is because I'm afraid if I put these out that small children might think they're actually food and eat them and we don't want that. <laughs> so I try to make them have faces so that kids will understand, oh this isn't something I'm supposed to put in my mouth. Or at least hopefully understand. So I don't do peppermints during Christmas either. Is too many kids might eat them. And I worry about that. So 
This one I'm going to do multiply, so you can kind of see like the different options here. So I'm going to do five eyes. And you just want to make sure you don't have them too close so that you can't put your outline on them. Which I may have done a little too close, but you know what, whatever. I'll make it work. I've been watching too much Project Runway. I'm saying make it work. Alright, so... And close up the white and rinse out your brush. I just now noticed you can see all the uh, paints, <laughs> which is fine. It helps you kind of see. I wish I'd done a better job marking them so you could really see what I'm using, but say la vie. Okay, so now we're going to go with the black, which is somewhere, oh, right there, and we're just going to outline, The smaller the eye, the harder the outline, I will say. Woo. Oh, is the, uh, the comments getting in the way of the rock? Sorry. I know that's a problem on mobile devices. So once you have all of these done, whew, that is very difficult. You have to decide what you kind of want for your mouth. There's so many different mouths you can do. I mean, like, tons of different types of mouths. You can make it happy, you can make it sad, you can make it like angry face, um, like a jack-o'-lantern face. There's, there's so many. There can, it can just be a simple line. You can have teeth showing. You can have tongue showing. You, it's, it's all up to you. Um, I do so many. You can also give it a beak. I mean, nothing says that these have to follow any set rules. Um, one of my favorite ones is doing... Just a simple tooth and like a little thing and then I fill in the tooth with white and I think it looks so cute. Now I will say if you're going to seal these um, and leave them for other people to find, first always make sure you sign it. It's important. Um, we have a group a sister group that is called TX Rockers Painters and that's where we tend to post all the ones that the rock painting group that I run is is at which you are welcome to join everybody's welcome to it um, and you would just use hashtag TX Rockers on the back so that people can find it um, mine tend to say more than that let's see if I have one yeah. so 
take, leave, or hide me, post on social media using hashtag TXRockers, please, 2020. So, that's one of the ways you can sign them. Um, and then, I suggest when you're hiding them, to hide them, number one, in pretty obvious plain sight, like, you don't want to make this too hard. Um, but also... Try to leave them on, like, other rocks or concrete. I don't like to leave them where they could possibly leak into grass or flowers or groundwater. Um, I just find it's safer. Although, I will say that the Ultra Painter's Touch Ultra Cover um, sealer that I have... I have left the beach rocks out since I did them, which was about a month ago, and they still look like brand new. So I don't know if that sealant's actually like dissipating any. I haven't noticed it. It's been raining really hard, so. And you can just do simple eyes if you want. And I'm just sort of doing a, a little spiral. I'm not really touching my brush down too hard to do this. And then I'm just making this bottom line a little thicker in order to give it a little bit more of like an eyelid effect. So it looks sort of like it's looking up. So see? And that's silly looking cute. Okay, and then I'm going to rinse off this brush because you don't want a fine liner drying because it'll be really hard to get the paint off of it if it dries. Um, and put them in there. Yeah, they these make great gifts as like pet rocks. Uh, like, if you're thinking, what what should I get, like, the kid who has everything, get them a pet rock. Like, paint them a pet rock. It's cute. It's personable. It's something that's fun. You can get them for any age. Not just kids, actually. You can get them for, you know, from, like, 5 to 500. Not that I know anyone who has lived at 500, but... Be probably a little creepy. I don't. I don't want to know what five hundred would look on a human. I feel like that would not be a very pretty look. All right. So now we're just gonna fill in these green pieces. Hoping we manage to get to all of these today. Thirty-six. We'll see. We will see. And I tend to try and make, like, the ends just a little bit darker, like, the, the uh, kind of outline. So I'll do, like, a secondary, and then I'll kind of lighten it by bringing it in. A secondary coat. Ta-da! Isn't it cute? It's so precious. Can you still see it? Yeah, y'all can still see it there. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing with the pepper. I'm just going to go in and... Greenify it. And it doesn't really matter what or what like direction you're facing to do this. Um, this one's not like the, the lines on the carrot or anything. You just put it however you want. I'm always on the lookout for like cute shapes of rocks that I could use for veggies or fruits or something because it's harder to find this style of rock like I can find simple rocks pretty easily or like this kind of rock but it's it's a lot harder for me to find like shapes I really like and like relate to um I don't know why it just tends to be for me you have to kind of go through a bunch of them wait 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 that's not white that's white this is green. It's 
it's going to be one of those days, I can tell. Okay, so, now we're going to move on to our peas. Alright, so, you can put white if you want to really pop the color inside of the dark green. Um, it's up to you, I think I will, because this also gives me an idea of like the size that I can kind of take up. And you can make a lot of peas, or you can make it like just two, because two peas in a pod, which is really cute. You can make one bigger than the other, because not all peas are created equal. It's all up to you. But I figure this kind of gives me an idea of, like, how much space I have to work with. Because then I can look at it and be like, okay, well, I can go a little further here. I can make this one a little bigger. And that way I can kind of, like, just sort of test. To see how much, like, wider I can make it. And this one will we'll do a highlight so you can sort of see what a highlight looks like on a... A veggie. Alright, so I'm just going to fill this in. Luckily, the good thing about Soho is it's a very fast drying paint, which is a good and a bad thing. It depends on what, what kind of art piece you're doing. If you want it to be, you know, a little bit more blendable, you're going to want to add a little bit more water to it. Um... So, it's really up to, to you and what you plan on doing with your art. But, I really like Soho. I've used it for years. Longer than I've actually been doing this rock painting stuff. So, it's, it's funny, I think I'm becoming known as like the rock painting girl. Because I keep getting uh, sent videos of like other artists who do rock painting, they're like, look at this technique, and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, cool. It's, it's really, really fun. I like seeing all the different things, and speaking of that, if you guys do these rocks, please, please post your pictures to me, or, or message them, or, you know, post them on our, our page. I love to see the finished rocks. I think it's so cute. You can comment them below if you want. Yeah, I just think it's really cool to, to see them. We also have an Instagram, um, if anybody's interested in that. We do have a Twitter, but I never I never use it. I'm not gonna lie. I just I'm not a Twitter person. I don't I don't know how to be a Twitter person. <laughs> Alright, so this one we're also going to do the outline. And you can do the outline before or after you color these green. It's up to you. Also you can decide on like the green you want and you can decide if you want to do a gradient on it, like an ombre effect. Um, you don't have to. It's up to you. Uh, these are, you know, yours, so make them yours. I think I'm going to darken the back of it so that I can use that lighter color for part of my ombre. So, I just noticed that my um, computer, the right side of my computer screen actually flashes anytime someone puts a comment on the uh, comment section. I was like, oh, I would, why, don't, why didn't I notice this sooner? I don't, I don't understand. So it's not perfect, but it works. Okay, so now on to the greens. Well, I mean, they both were green, but the pea part of the green, which just sounds so bad. Um, so I'm going to wet my brush a little 
just so that it's a little bit more malleable so I can blend it easier. Now, if you're going to do a highlight, what I'd suggest is taking your color closer to the edge on whatever side you're going to highlight on. So like if you're going to highlight over here, take that lighter color up. It's better to have too much light color than too, too little, in my opinion. Uh oh. Oh no, where did that go? Oh, there it is. Thought I lost a cap. Would have been bad. Okay. So then I'm going to take my dark and again wet my brush. Ooh. My favorite rock that I've painted so far, that's a good question. Um, like in this class or like ever? Cause those are two totally different answers. I did this awesome um, rock at the camp that I teach at, and it was this like red, super multi-eyed monster with this like squiggle face. It was the cutest thing, and I loved it so much. But for this class, oof. I don't know, they're, they're all so fun to make and, and just cute. Um, I don't know, I've never done the peas before, so I, I like trying new ones that I've never done before. Um, I'm always trying new designs, like I didn't even do a sample of this rock, I have no idea what I'm doing, guys. <laughs> I mean, I do kind of know what I'm doing, because, like, I've painted for years. I've just never done it on a rock before. Um, which is a very different thing, mind you, doing it on a rock. Um, hmm. Probably the jellyfish rock I did. I really loved that. Or one of the mandalas. I, I have so many. I really loved the mandalas, though. I think I'm going to have to stick with one of the mandalas. I'm not sure which one, but one of them. <laughs> So what I've done here is I've wet my brush and then I'm using some of the lighter green paint as well as the water to allow me to re-wet that darker paint and kind of come in and make like an ombre effect. Like I said, there's so many different ways to do this. Um, there's, there's literally no, no right way to do this. And you can also, like, add paint and then take a little darker paint, come in, and just sort of add it. it. It's really up to you how you do this. But I do have a, a very soft spot in my heart for all my monster rocks. I, I, I don't know why, I just really like making cute monster rocks. One year at um, one of the festivals I attend, I like made a whole bunch and put them out for kids at different venues and during the fair. And it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and I heard so many positive stories back afterwards. It was, it was really cool. So this is one of those rocks that just looks a lot harder than it actually is. Because when you see it finished, it's going to look like it's it was super difficult, and it wasn't. Um, clearly, because you've, you've sat here and you've watched how I did this, it's, it's not the hardest thing in the world. Um, 
so now I'm going to come in. And don't worry, there's going to be more detail on the outside as well. Um, we're not done with that. Now I'm going to come in, and I'm just sort of going to put a highlight spot. On each of these. And you don't want to make it too stiff. Like, you want to kind of make it a little... Um, arced. I guess. So that it looks more like a highlight. And then... Come in. And do... Just some cute eyes. Simple, simple eyes. This one you could make with a dotting tool. Wouldn't be too hard to make this size of an eye. But like I said, the smaller they are, the harder they are to line. And these are going to be nightmarish. <laughs> I like how the white highlight kind of looks like um, hair. <laughs> I don't know how it appears for you, but to me it looks like hair. And don't worry, we're going to be outlining the um, outside of it. So, you can rest assured we'll be doing that. Uh, which one is this? Yeah, we're good with that one for now. We're going to use that in a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to use my liner brush again, because liner brushes are awesome and helpful and useful. And this is a 20 over 0. Uh, creative mark fine tip liner and I'm just sort of making a squiggle face if you mess up don't worry like I said just make it better keep painting until it looks right. <laughs> Remember, Jackson Pollock has this whole art collection of splatters that look accidental. So there's literally no right way or wrong way to do something. Now, when I'm doing much smaller um, eyes, I will sort of dab at it, as opposed to, um, just dragging my brush around, so it's like a, a very small, dabbing motion. Like, I barely put my, my brush right above it, and then I just sort of dab around so that it doesn't um, cake too much in one, one area. And you're going to want to clean like, your brush occasionally so that it doesn't get goopy. Because especially after being like the paint's open for a while or um, it being on your brush too long, it will get caked. And nobody wants that. Ta-da! Okay, and then we're going to just outline the P itself. And you want to do this one a little thicker. But I'm not doing it over here near the the wrap, I guess, the, the like leaf part, because we'll do that at the end, once we've done, finished the leaf. I think I was highly too in optimistic that uh, we would finish six rocks today. <laughs> ah. We're gonna get just through three, I think. Which is nice, though. I mean, 
And you can either leave them with just white eyes, or you can, like, do that dabbing motion again, like I said. And this may be easier with a pen. Pay attention to where your highlight is, if you have a highlight, because that way you can match the highlight in the eyes. Oop. This one is all sorts of messy. No, no. That won't do. And you can outline the highlight if you'd like. Um, in fact, let's, let's just go ahead and do that. So you can kind of see what that looks like. So that's what it looks like if you outline the highlight as well as the rock. So. Do, do, do. Alright, so rinse off your brush. Because rinsing off your brush is very important. Especially with fine liners, you want to make sure you're constantly rinsing off your brush, pretty much. And I'm going to close my black because it's going to dry out if I don't. Same with the white. They're going to dry out. You always want to be vigilant against drying out your paints. So, then we're going to do a line here. And this green. <laughs> yeah, you can make them have little stick hands. That'd be super cute. But I'd suggest waiting until you're done with the, the decoration of the um, leaf before doing that. Because that way um, the leaf is fully decorated and like has all of its dimensions okay so he has this sort of thing and then we're going to take a center brush we're going to use this one and in a deep green Go through and just do little lines. So it kind of looks like this, and I'm gonna ruin it with my hands. I'll show you at the end. Okay, so here we have that, and then you can go in and, and darken the back end some more if you want. Um, it's up to you, but here is our, our finished peas, how I'm gonna leave them. They could, you could also add highlights in the eyes. Um, I would suggest using like a, a pen. To do that real easy, just sort of dot and dot, just to give it a little more dimension. Um, but yeah, so these are the three we did finished today. And next week we will be doing veg or uh, fruit friends, so you can see some of the others. And I, like I said, the other vegetables. Um, will be included in that one. Um, hopefully we will manage to get through all of them. If not, there will be a third part. So I hope all of you have a great week, and I will see you here same time, same place next week. Bye!